Chris Schloop, uh, senior editor at Amazon Books, and I'm here with Lily King, author of Euphoria. First of all, thank you for coming. No, thank you for having me. Um, so how did this novel come to be? It came to be completely unexpectedly because I was working on my last novel, Father of the Rain, and I was really at the beginning of that novel. And I went to a used bookstore and it was going out of business and there were very few books left. A friend had brought me um, as sort of a treat and so I grabbed a book out of courtesy to her and it was a Margaret Mead biography. And I took it home and I started reading it and I got to this one very short chapter when Margaret Mead was in um, way up the Sapic River of New Guinea with her husband and they were doing field work there. And they met another anthropologist, really the only anthropologist, the only other anthropologist who was, was there at the time, 1933. And they had this wild, wild love triangle for about five months. And I thought, oh my God, that would be, make such an amazing novel. But I kind of put it aside thinking, well, I'm writing this novel and I don't write that kind of novel anyway. And then I just started sneaking around, you know, reading a lot of things by Margaret Mead and reading um, bio autobiography of Gregory Bateson and reading things about anthropology in 1933. And one thing led to another. I started taking notes. And I started to get ideas and started to see how a novel might work. So, so did you have to do a lot of research then? I mean, was it, did you, did you travel there? Because it just seems like you've been there. I didn't travel there. I didn't. Um, but I certainly read as much as I could get my hands on about the area. And without giving too much away, how much did you change the story, with the um, characters? You know, it's interesting. I thought that I was going to stick pretty closely to the story. I mean, there's no, there are no scenes and there's no dialogue, so I had to make up a lot. But I thought that I would pretty much cover that terrain. Um, but once I started writing the scenes and dialogue, they completely took over and they had another story to tell. And it, it ended up not even being the woman's story, sort of the, the Margaret Mead doppelganger. It really, it ends up being um, my character Bankson's story. Yeah. Um, there's this kind of interesting tension between, you know, acad academic rigor and then passion. Like, is this something you sought out to do, mm. or is, it, is that, am I just getting that from the book? I mean, because, it's something you, I mean, there are surprises both ways, you know, in terms of how, they seem to be really, um, they just have a, they're real characters, you know, there's just, they have so many layers. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I was really interested in what happened between Margaret Mead and Gregory Bateson. And it was a very intellectual attraction as well as physical and, and emotional. Um, and, and so I was interested in trying to replicate something like that. And I, I do think that the best love stories are a meeting of the minds as well as the bodies. Yeah. Um, the, the Tam tribesman who came from the mine, where did, where did he originate? Um, well, I read about this concept of blackbirding, which was such a horrific term, but really shows the, the racism and the sort of acquisition that um, those corporations in, um, in that part of the area were exhibiting toward the native population. And, and so I heard that these blackbirders would come and lure these natives away to work in there. Um, in their minds and in, on their plantations, and they would make them promises that they probably didn't fulfill, and, and I think that they got there, and I imagine that it was quite, you know, close to a slave situation, um, poor conditions, uh, and the inability to perhaps leave um, until your contract was up, and I don't know exactly what the contracts look like. Right. Uh, so I wanted to have one of those characters in my novel who comes back and what that cultural intersection is like from somebody who, who spent their whole life in a tribe and then they're, they're brought to see this part of, of the West and then, and then return back. Looking at your novels in general, I've, I have this sense that you have a fascination with a certain kind of alienation of people, mm -hmm. you know, who sort of observe their lives and are different from what they're seeing. I mean, do you, do you agree with that? Am I making this up? Is, would you agree with that? Or is that just sort of my read on your career? 
No, I think that is that is very true. I, I am interested in in the outsider, in the person who doesn't have the the group mentality um, that other people have in the book, and I, I think it comes from um, my interest in travel. Uh, in foreign um, places and my interest in foreign languages and, and also, you know, I had a, uh, a family life um, growing up that my parents divorced and then my mother remarried, my father remarried, then my father divorced and remarried again. And so I had to fit into a lot of different families. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe it comes from that too. Do you have a favorite character in the book? Oh, Banks. Okay, all right. I don't know if it's a Madly fair question. Madly in love with him. All right, good. Very fun to write. Um, and then what's next for you? I am really excited about what I'm about to write next, but I have a lot of research ahead of me and I can't talk about it. Okay, that's fair <laughs> enough. Thank you, Lily King. Oh, thank you Appreciate so it. much. Thank yeah. you.